Good morning, Mr Chairman. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this virtual meeting of South Cast Stephen uh, Planning Committee. Uh, I'm looking forward to the fullest cooperation, members and public alike, in ensuring that our deliberations proceed in an orderly, <coughs> excuse me, and professional manner. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, housekeeping matters very quickly. Uh, please ensure all devices not being used are turned off or put to silent. And for members of the committee, please ensure you connect to your main supply uh, to lessen the possibility of losing your connection. Uh, Helpful if all landlines are situated so that they're muted and uh, the minimum of distractions from uh, outside uh, sources. Members of the committee have control of their own microphones and ask you to remember to turn them on when you start speaking and turn them off when you finish. Uh, Shelley has control of the mechanism for turning off the microphones for public speakers. Um, members of the public have their cameras turned on when they are speaking, please, uh, and speakers will be advised when they have 30 seconds left to speak or when their time is up. Chat function in Skype for Business is for the use of planning committee members only who want to indicate they would like to speak. If members of the public or other members uh, should start to use the chat function, uh, if they do, they'll be asked once by me to stop, and if they continue to use it, they will be removed from the meeting. There is IT support during the whole of the meeting, should it be needed. Uh, uh, if a member or members do get disconnected for more than a few seconds, I'll refer members and the public to 6.16.2, and if whoever's got their microphone on, would they please turn it off? It is uh, causing disturbance in the, in the microphones. So I'll repeat that. Uh, if a member does get disconnected, uh, I'll refer to 16.2 uh, of the published protocol, which adjourns the meeting to enable us to reconnect that, uh, that particular member or members. And again, I remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded. Uh, Anita uh, Ecclesley will be taking minutes of the meeting uh, and Shelley oh. Thurker. Shelley, can you turn your microphones off, please, if you're not speaking? Uh, uh, I am in the council chamber with uh, Councillor Reid. Uh, Anita <coughs> Ecclesley is uh, do, taking the minutes, and Shelley Thurkell uh, will be assisting me in uh, the administration of the meeting. So uh, before actually going through the uh, process of the meeting, I'd like to call on Shelley, please, to do a roll call of members. Shelley? Um, Anita will be doing the roll call, please, Chairman. Oh, will Anita be doing the uh, vote recall as well? Yes, she certainly will, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. I'll get it right one day. Uh, Anita, roll call, Good please. Morning. Good morning, Mr Chairman. Good morning again. Uh, Councillor Bob Adams. Present. Councillor Judy Smith. Present. Thank you. Councillor David Me. Present. Councillor Bishnau Singh. Can't see them on there. Uh, they're in the wrong meeting. There's uh, Parrish and uh, Rosemary. Okay, I'll, I'll get that. Oh, Would people who are not speaking to the microphone please turn their microphones off? There's too much noise coming through in, uh, to other members of the meeting. Councillor Bishnau Singh. Are you present? I can see your picture. I, I am here now. Thank you. Thank I'm you. In the front room. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. Present. Thank you. Councillor Dilks. Present, Mark. Thank you. Councillor Exton. <laughs> present. Councillor KB Brown. We'll check to see if she's not in the other meeting, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Milnes. Present. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Councillor Reid. Present. Councillor Kaby Run is in the other room. Okay, thank you. Councillor Selby. Councillor Selby. So, present. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith. Present. Thank you. Um, so we just have Councillor Morgan and Councillor Cabley Brown not in this meeting. Um, I'll just check to see if she's in the other meeting, Mr Chairman. Okay. Okay, we will just adjourn for a few seconds while uh, we sort that out.
Hello. Hello, who's speaking, please? Sorry, uh, I don't know who that was that spoke. We've just uh, adjourned for a few seconds as we've lost connectivity with one of our members. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, we're just checking still. Thank you, Anita. Mr. Chairman, I'll arrange for somebody to ring Councillor KB Brown because we can't um, see whether she's in the other meeting or not. I've okay. just checked, um, Mr. Chairman, and she's not actually in the other meeting, so um, I'm not quite sure where she is. Maybe having um, connection issues. Well, can we get uh, IT on? I think we can proceed because uh, the 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 rest is still housekeeping at the moment. Um, uh, either Anita or Shelley, I think we have uh, the, an applicant's agent, Mark Mann. Um, is this not, uh, can't hear us. His uh, mobile number is 07884 Could one of you kindly give him a call and see uh, if he has a connection problem? Yes, certainly, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. He is, uh, Mr. Mann is due to speak on the first item on the agenda, so I think we need to uh, wait a few moments to ensure that he can join the meeting. I think, Mr. Mann, there's uh, Mark in the uh, lobby or waiting. Um, I think he might be. Is it Mark Mann? Mr. Mann, yes. can you hear us? We've unmuted your microphone. If you could just confirm. I just, I just got a message through that he couldn't Hello. hear us. Ah. Is that Mr. Mann? One of Democratic Services is giving him a call, Mr. Chairman, so um, okay. hopefully we'll get that resolved shortly. Yeah, well, we can't really move on until we do because he is uh, one of the speakers on the first item on the agenda. Mr. Mann, can you hear me? This is uh, Councillor Adams, Chairman of the Committee. I can hear you shuffling about, Mark. Can you hear me at all? Hello? Hello, I can hear you, yes, Mark. Yes. Can you hear me now? Hiya. Yes, I, I, I'm in the meeting, but I don't seem to have any uh, audio at all. I can see everybody, but no audio. Okay. So, sometimes this happens, but it's not always the case. I've just muted him, Mr. Chairman, so obviously that won't be on the recording. Okay, but we do need to get him into the meeting so that we can proceed. 
Yes, I, th- I think that was just Naomi on the phone to him now. I think he just can't hear us. Okay, it's not very helpful if he can't hear us. Bob, well, it, it looks as if there's a, a message on the uh, uh, chat box. It just says, hi, microphone keeps switching off. That's, Har- that's Harris again. So uh, I don't quite know where, where Harris is or what his problem is. I'm pretty sure I saw that, and which was Harris. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. It just it should be his microphone keep flashing. Uh, Mr. Well, Harris, let's let's leave it to the technical people, shall we, please? Can I suggest while we wait, Mr. Chairman, we do the minutes of the last meeting? No, we do need everybody in to if we're going to have a. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have just had Councillor KB Brown on the phone. She's having difficulties getting in. I'm just going to get IT to phone her. All right. Okay. You know, more. I'm more concerned about Mr. Mann being able to be with us in total. Uh, but at some point, if he isn't, we'll have to stop the meeting anyway. I think we perhaps do it now while we're trying to get Rosemary and uh, uh, Mark Mann into the meeting. No, I can't hear anything, no. <laughs> Have you rejoined again? I've, I've, I've rejoined again with the headphones disconnected. It seems that Naomi's still trying to talk him through things, <laughs> Mr Chairman. OK. <clears throat> Are we any closer to getting Rosemary Cabry Brown into the meeting? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'm just trying to contact IT. All right. Okay. I think if she shuts down, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. IT, IT are dealing with it, Mike. Thank you. Okay, fair enough. I thought, you know. It's, uh, yeah. Sorry for the delay, Mr. Chairman. We're still trying to get hold of IT. Bob? Bob, can you speak? Oh, no, uh, he's on the phone at the minute, just trying to sort it out. Is that uh, Mr. Mann? It is. Uh, hang on, I'm putting down. You, can, can you hear us OK now, Mr. Mann? I can hear you now, yes. Lovely. That that's perfect. That's just um, so you can you can hear us. Can you see us? Is is everything okay from your end now? Well, I, I can hear you. Bob Bob is speaking, but I, I assume he's got his mic. He on mute. he has yes. He's got his microphone muted at the moment because he, he's on the on the telephone. That, so right. He's trying I... to resolve the technical issues. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mann can now hear. Mr. Chairman, sorry, um, Mr. Mann can now hear and join the meeting correctly. OK, what about Rosemary? Um, I've asked IT if someone could get in touch with her. I believe Jordan is on standby, so I'm hoping that she'll, she's probably on the phone to, to Rosemary at the moment. I have just let her in and she has just actually popped up in the lobby and I have just let her in, but I can't see her on the list. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, she's in there. Yes, I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Rosemary. OK, we can now proceed. And thank you for your patience. And thank you for that, Mark. I can see you now. (laughs) 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 
we will we will proceed with the meeting uh so uh anita we did the roll call of us and we can now include uh, rosemary cabry brown on the attendance ready to see us um yes mr chairman we don't have councillor morgan but i believe that um if she's not in attendance she's asked for apologies to be submitted so i haven't received any apologies but as she's not here i will note her apologies thank you very much indeed of course if she comes later we, we can let her in yeah Okay, so we've done the uh, roll call of, a mem of, of members. I'm now going to go through the list of speakers, and if there is anybody who has indicated uh, prior to the meeting that they wish to speak on any item and they don't hear their name called out, uh, will they please let me know? Um, and just so, so everybody is clear, there are no uh, speakers on item six, but there are quite a number of speakers on item seven. So we are going to just reverse the order of that commit of the agenda and, ha uh, and hear item seven before we hear item six. So speakers on agenda item four, um, we have two ward councillors uh, speaking, uh, Councillor Ray Wharton and Councillor Ian Stokes. Uh, and we have uh, Mr. Mark Mann, the applicant's agent. Uh, on uh, agenda item five, uh, we have the ward councillor, Judy Stevens, to speak. We have Kate Shinkins Hop, or Hope, of uh, Deeping St. James Parish Council. We have two actual members of the council, but they're speaking in a private capacity in uh, Councillor Baxter and Virginia Moran. Uh, and we have the applicant's agent, uh, Georgina McRae. As I said, no, I, no uh, public speakers on item six. Uh, on item seven, uh, we have uh, from, from the parish council. Rosemary, could you turn your microphone? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Richard Dixon Warren, who is Chairman of Hackenby and Stan Stainfield Parish Council. We have two speakers against the uh, pr uh, proposal, uh, Michael Shipman and Lawrence Coulson. We have a speaker for the application in Lynn McBride. Uh, and we have the applicant's agent, Sam Deacon, Deegan, sorry, Deegan. And uh, on item eight, um, we have uh, one speaker uh, who is the chairman of the parish council, John Bavister. If there's anybody else who's indicated prior to the meeting that they wish to uh, address the committee, could they please tell me now? Councillor Mosley, uh, I've got your note in the chat box. I'm sorry, you should. The protocol says you should uh, notify before the meeting and let us have a script in case we lose connectivity. Uh, and I will follow the uh, the protocol and the constitution and say, sorry, uh, uh, I will not be bringing you in to speak on item seven. OK, can we then move on um, to... Uh, the actual agenda itself. Uh, uh, so register of attendance, we have done item two, disclosures of interest. Uh, does any member of the committee have any uh, interest to declare other than that that is already in the uh, uh, book of direct declaration of interest? For myself, I, I will, as both the district councillor and the <coughs> County Councillor, uh, I, uh, I have, <coughs> excuse me, um, the uh, item uh, six is in my district and county ward and item eight is in my county ward. Any other member wish to uh, indicate? It's not necessary uh, to really do that because it is in the book of declarations, but uh, just for the tra total transparency. Okay. Can we move on to item three on the agenda, please, which is minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of February. They have been circulated. Uh, can I take those as read, please? If there's no, if there is uh, no, um, no indication that uh, members have got issues with the minutes, could I have a proposition, please, that they be approved as a correct record? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Could I have a seconder, please? Yes, Copy. Chairman, Judy. 
Thank you, Judy. Uh, could we go to the vote, please? Anita? Chairman. Certainly, Mr. Chairman, sorry. Um, Councillor Bellamy? Four. Councillor Bishnow Singh? Four. Councillor Crawford? Four. Councillor Dilks? Four. Councillor Exton? Four. Councillor KB Brown? Four. Thank you. Councillor Milnes? Four. Councillor Reid? Four. Councillor Selby? Abstain. Councillor Jackie Smith? Four. Thank you. Councillor Judy Smith? Four. Councillor Bob Adams? Four. Thank you. So that's 11-4 and one abstention for the minutes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Anita. Okay, we move on to uh, item four on the agenda, application S181457. Um, and could I just confirm that uh, Councillor Wotton and Councillor Stokes are with us and Mr. Mann? Yes, Chairman, Councillor Wotton here. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Ray. Councilor yes, Stokes I'm here. here. Thank you. I know Mr. Mann is OK. So the uh, the application uh, is uh, in the hands of Phil Moore to do the presentation. Phil, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, morning, everybody. My name's Phil Moore, Special Projects Manager at SKDC and also Case Officer for this application. Uh, if I can just ask you to be patient while I bring up the presentation on the screen. This might take a minute or so. OK, Phil. Can you, can you see anything yet? Not quite yet, not quite, Phil, yet. Right, is that up now? Not yet. Yes, it's uh, it, with it, it is now, Phil. Yep. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, sorry about the delay. <coughs> no problem. Right, okay then. So uh, this is a reserve matters application um, relating to appearance, landscaping, layout and scale. It's for 480 dwellings and it's pursuant to an outline permission uh, which was granted on appeal in 2018. And it's the site is at Longcliffe Road. Grantham, just on the north edge of Grantham. So the, the key issues, firstly, whether or not the proposal accords with the parameters and conditions on the outline permission, and secondly, design quality. So this plan shows you where the site is in relation to, to Grantham. Uh, as you can see, it's on the north edge of Grantham adjacent to the East Coast railway line on the western side. Then you've got Manthorpe Village on the eastern side. And then you've got the existing built development of what's known as the Manthorpe Estate on the north edge of Grantham. Uh, this is a bit more zoomed in version of that previous plan. As you can see, the railway on the left hand side, Manthorpe Village on the right hand side. Satellite image. This clearly shows the uh, what the land is used for at the moment: arable farming. And this plan shows you the extent of the reserve matters application. Um, you'll note that it doesn't cover the whole of the area that was covered by the outline permission. Um, those 
areas will be subject to future reserve matters or full applications. Um, so the areas that are not included in this application include the school, um, this sort of landscape corridor along the southern part of the site, this open space here, and large areas of open space, landscaping and sports grounds on this eastern end of the development. So very quickly, some photographs of the site. This is taken from quite a distance away from Great Gunnerby. Now, the site, if you can see my cursor, is round about there. This is looking from the East Coast main line, looking east. Again, the, the site is kind of broadly this area. That's looking from Manthorpe Village. You wouldn't really see the site from this angle um, because there'd be lots of intervening landscaping, but it is beyond that hedge and, and the, uh, the farmstead just there. Uh, and then finally, this is looking from Longcliffe Road. Now, this is one of the main entrances to the development, effectively a continuation of Longcliffe Road. Um, so the development itself is kind of beyond there. Now, this is Belton Lane, which goes between Manthorpe and Great Gunnerby. Looking east, this is roughly where the northern entrance of the site would be, round about where that gateway is, or roughly in this area. Looking in the opposite direction, again, the entrance would be sort of about there, the T junction. So this, the, there is quite a lot of background to the to this site and this application, uh, which I'll run through uh, in summary. So firstly, the site was identified as being suitable for development in the, the Grantham Capacity Study. This was a, a piece of work that the council did to identify land potentially suitable for development uh, on the edges of Grantham, and that was done in 2015. Following that, outline planning permission was granted for um, sustainable urban extension that was granted on appeal in 2018 and then subsequent to the approval on appeal of the outline a master plan and design code uh, which was required by a condition of the outline was approved in 2018 followed by the submission of this reserve matters application later on in 2018 now, as you as you know, this application has been in for quite a while. It's been through quite a lot of, of design work in that time. The first piece of work was a design review by uh, Open, uh, who are a local, well, I'll say local, a Midlands design review panel. They're now known as Design Midlands. So they carried out a review and made some recommendations. Following that, there was significant engagement with officers to re further refine in the design. Uh, including design pad sessions and the latest set of amended plans were formally submitted early this year and they're the ones that's that uh, before you now just want to show you now very quickly how the design has evolved over that period so this was the Grantham capacity study and where my cursor is now that's the site and as you'll note, there's a kind of a, a chunk or a bite, if you like, taken out of the north of the site. And the reason for that was it was felt that any development above the 65 metre contour line would be detrimental to the setting of Belton House and Park and views from there. So that was specifically excluded uh, from land in the capacity study that identified as suitable. Phil, I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you have a different pointer or cursor? It's very difficult to see the one that you're using. Um, unfortunately, I don't. Okay. It's, sorry about that. I'll try. I'll try to keep it as still as possible. Perhaps it's because I'm moving it around too much. Thank, thank you, Phil. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Mr. German. I can't see anything. Okay. In that case, I'll I'll try and describe um, 
a bit more accurately <laughs> where I'm uh, uh, sort of pointing to. So uh, outline permission granted in 2018 on appeal. This was the illustrative master plan that came in when that application was submitted. Uh, as, you, as you may note, it does include built development above the 65 meter contour line, this first iteration. Um, it got overall a good design, but it didn't comply with the capacity study because of the development over the 65 meter contour line. And um, I, I, you perhaps can't see my cursor, but the, the sort of yellowy bit near the top with a, with a blue blob, that kind of area is above the 65 meter contour line. So following officer advice, the illustrative master plan was amended, taking out all of that built development above the 65 meter contour line to, to comply with the capacity study um, plan. Also uh, notable features of this amendment are that the local centre is further down the hill, closer to the existing development to the south, so much easier to access uh, for existing residents. Other features of note on this master plan are view corridors along cycleways towards St John's Church at Manthorpe and also to the south towards St Wolfram's. <clears throat> so I don't know if you can, you probably can't see my, my cursor, but there are, there's a line stretching southwards and a line stretching eastwards. They are the view corridors towards these heritage assets. And at the outline, outline stage, although it's outlined and we're talking about the principle of development, there were some very strict parameters set at the outline stage. Condition eight, particularly, uh, requires any future reserve matters applications to be broadly in line with the principles uh, of the, the, the listed plans there. That includes heights, um, landscape parameters, access parameters, etc., etc. So it's quite quite tightly set at outline stage, uh, the, the, the broad parameters of what will be acceptable at reserve matter stage. So that, again, that's the, the, the illustrative master plan that was approved as part of the outline. And that condition that I just mentioned means that any future reserve matters have to be broadly in line with that master plan and the other parameters. I won't dwell on these too much, but this, the, the, the following slides are the parameters that were set at outline. So this is the access parameters, shows the, the road hierarchy, where the accesses would be, where the main road would be, etc. Land use parameters, this, this sets out where the neighbourhood centre, school, residential parcels and, and landscaping would be. Building heights, Density, well, that's self-explanatory. Lower density towards the edges, slightly higher around the, the sort of squares and the local centre. Same with heights as well. And uh, landscape parameters, obviously showing where the significant areas of landscaping have to be. And that includes, by the way, some allotments and a community orchard, large areas of sports grounds, etc. And then finally, the phasing parameter, setting out the, the order which the development would be built, starting with the phase 1A, which is on the left, which is essentially um, part of what we're looking at today. Also, phase 3B, 3A, and 1B, and 2A. They're all included in, in the application, which is before you today. So following the approval of the outline application, a master plan was submitted as required by the condition, a more detailed master plan. And this was that master plan, as you'll know, pretty much in line with the illustrative master plan, with a movement plan that went with it. I want to the current reserve matters application. 
apologies for the quality of this this plan. Uh, I've had to splice together four different plans because there wasn't an overall plan submitted initially. It was it was in these different chunks. So this was what was originally submitted. Um, again, not a bad design. Um, all in line with the parameters that have been set at outline, but we did feel that there were improvements that could be made in design terms. So following all of the uh, design reviews and pad meetings, etc., a number of key amendments have been made. They include tree lined main streets. Now that's been possible because LCC have changed their policy on street trees. Originally, at the time when this was first submitted, they wouldn't adopt street trees. They now will. Uh, they will adopt street trees. They encourage street trees. They see the value of them, of them creating a sense of place. Focal square in place of the roundabout, that was a recommendation from the open review. Uh, again, it gives the, the uh, development uh, more of a sense of place. Edge lanes in, in uh, place of cul-de-sacs where possible and various amendments to house types. So this is the amended reserve matters layout before you today. Again, you'll note it's broadly the same as the all, all the previously approved master plans and parameters completely in line with those. Apologies if you can't see my cursor, but uh, in the area close to the area that's hatched brown and red, there was a roundabout. That's now a focal square, a much, much better uh, arrangement than before, and the main streets are tree line. Various other plans have been submitted, including materials. These have been worked up following officer advice, and rather than sort of random materials spread throughout the development, for example, the main street will be mostly buff brick to give it its own character, make it stand out from the rest of the development whilst red brick is used uh, in, <clears throat> in other areas. Also buff brick around the, the, the feature squares. Roof materials. Yeah, again, some thoughts got into that to, to uh, mark out different character areas. Boundaries and landscaping, lots of details there. As you'll note from this one, tree-lined street, lots of trees in the parks. Um, and um, along cycleways. Boundary treatments uh, are, are well thought out as well. Along the main street, there, there's a theme there of hedges and estate railings uh, with some brick walls, but it's, it's high quality boundary treatment. <clears throat> In terms of the house type distribution, the, the applicant has tried to create, well, well has um, put forward this idea of character areas with different house types in different character areas, <clears throat> which is what the colours represent. And they've got lots of different house types, but each house type has th three themes. So they've got uh, the top one is the um, cottage theme, which is sort of a slightly more rustic uh, look about it. Central one is the classic theme, a bit more formal, and the bottom one is contemporary. So they're all the same house types, but with these different themes, and that's how they're the colours that I showed you on the previous plan. That, that's that's what that means. Some visualisations. Top left, one of the view corridors looking towards the Wolframs, lots of trees, high quality landscaping. Top right, this is the entrance from Belton Lane where the allotments and the, the orchard would be. Again, lots of trees, tree lined street. And the bottom one is, is the same one from a different angle. And this is the southern part of the site. Showing similar characteristics, lots of trees, hedgerows, uh, some which have been retained or will be retained. This is the central square. The top left visualization shows <clears throat> a, a neighborhood center, uh, which is for illustrative purposes only because that will be subject to a different, a new application. But it does show the square as it would be as proposed by this application. 
the, the real focal point to the development. So in terms of evaluation, very quickly, principle of development is already established through the grant of outline consent. All major issues like highways, landscape character, um, heritage, drainage, etc., were all addressed at that stage. It can't be revisited now. This reserve matters is only concerned with appearance, scale, layout, and landscaping. The de those details. Overall, the scheme is in accordance with the principles and parameters of, of the outline consent and master plan. Lots of design enhancements, as previously mentioned, resulting in a high quality of design, no adverse impacts, and overall it accords with all the relevant policies. And the recommendation is to approve subject to conditions. And before I hand back to the chairman, um, I'm recommending also a minor change to condition nine, uh, which I will attempt to put on the screen now. Just let me know if that's come up. I assume that's come up. Yes, it has. Yep. Uh, so it's, it's a minor change to condition nine. Uh, it's following further discussion with environmental health. Um, this, this is just a safeguard to ensure that um, the dwellings that are closest to the railway uh, have appropriate sound attenuation measures fitted, and that means things like uh, special glass, um, mechanical ventilation, but those kinds of things. Um, the, there's a bund along the railway track, or well, there will be acoustic fencing on top. That's that's all been deemed to be absolutely fine. This is just a further measure, just to ensure that the, the dwellings that are closest. Um, do achieve the, the required sound attenuation measures. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, Phil. Uh, before we go to questions to uh, the case officer, we have uh, two public speakers and the applicant's agent. So uh, uh, in my list, Councillor Ray Wootton is the first uh, councillor to speak. Councillor Wootton. Can you hear me, Ray? Okay, Councillor Stokes, Ian Stokes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Would you like to go and then we'll try and uh, get back to uh, Councillor Wharton. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Yes, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled by this, really, because on the 19th of January 2018, the inspector allowed the appeal see um, 3.4 on page 10 and the permission had condition 3 C 7.1.2 on page 13 any reserve matters application had to be submitted within three years of the date of the date of the outline permission uh, would you note that the amended <coughs> plans were submitted according to the officers uh, uh, brief on in January 2021, C3.9, page 11. Was this actually within the time frame prior to the 19th? And why was the actual date not mentioned? <coughs> the actual design of the estate is very samey, even though there is a mixture of red and buff bricks and different things. Um, but the, the actual design of the buildings is very poor although it's gone through various uh, officers, etc. Uh, why are there no bungalows within the 480 residential units? You know, elderly residents need them, disabled persons. Is it DDA compliant? Um, at 3.5 page 10, there is mention of the section 106 agreement. Why are the full details not listed in this particular um, application? Uh, I mean, traffic lights in Gonaby on the original agreement do not appear mentioned. And, and traffic lights at the other end of the Belton Lane are really essential as well. Uh, they were never mentioned in the first place, but they should have been. Um, other than that, um, you, you'll go ahead with it, but I, I wish it had been a better design. And I must admit that Phil's pictures of the design didn't left a lot to be designed because it was so small you could hardly make out what, which building was where. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Councillor Stokes. Ian, Phil, no doubt you'll answer those when you when you uh, when we come to questions later on. Yes. Thank you, Councillor yes, Morton Ray. Please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Dean, Mr. Chairman. Um, as Phil's mentioned, the application was first submitted in 2015 and rejected by this authority. However, that decision was overturned by the Planning Inspector in 2018. Um, at the time, there was strong feeling, Mr Chairman, within the local community against this application, so much so that nearly 1,000 residents objected to the plans. If this application were to come before this committee again, I would have no hesitation to call for its refusal. And at the time, I was pleased that the Planning Committee agreed with my concerns and those of the residents. Despite that, many residents' objections are still here today, which are excessive traffic congestions, highway safety issues, exhaust fumes, plus the loss of privacy and the capacity of the physical infrastructure. Mr Chairman, you may say that all these have been dealt with, but that may be so for this report, but they failed to listen to the community's views. Before lockdown, it was common to see traffic backed up from Brook Street in Grantham to as far back as Belton Village, adding to the nearly 10,000 vehicles that use the A607 every day, including those travelling from Belton Lane in Great Gonaby. The idea that there was going to be traffic lights installed in Great Gonaby along with cycle lanes was good in theory, but that did remind me of Milton Keynes, where you could cycle from one side of the city without crossing a road. All very good in a purpose-built town, but we are talking about Grantham, a market town which dates back several centuries. Nothing gives me confidence that traffic flow pollution will improve, especially with the fumes exceeding the limit at this time in Brook Street. Traffic will now be able to enter the Manthorpe Estate from Belton Lane and use Longcliffe Road as a rat run to avoid the Belton Lane A607 junction. Priory Ruskin Academy School attracts 1,300 pupils each day, with many being driven to the school. Often alone, this blocks residents' homes in Ruskin Road and Sancliffe Road. Of course, those in authority will say this is acceptable. Perhaps they like to try this route on a daily basis when they see and see if it's still acceptable once normal life resumes. The only glint of hope I can see for residents is that the design of the new estate has tree-lined avenues and attractive squares, and that the homes have been designed with character or not <laughs> with boxes. For this, I am thankful to SKDC planning team. Mr Chairman, we are where we are with the expansion of Grantham and it's the growth of town, yet more to come. We still have no relief road from the A1 north to the A52, but then, of course, we'll be all expected to drive electric cars and either walk or cycle to work. It might work in a purpose-built city like Milton Keynes, but not in Grantham. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Wotton. Uh, we now move on to the applicant's agent, uh, Mark Mann, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, the application before you today is for the approval of reserved matters following the grant of outlying planning permission. Only matters of detail, such as the design of the homes, landscape and external appearance are being considered. Matters such as the traffic impacts have already been considered and found to be acceptable. In addition, many of the design issues have been approved, either through the outline application or through the discharge of conditions. Consequently, the matters before you, are, before you today are very much the product of the details already approved, such as the master plan and design code. Notwithstanding this, we have worked with your planning and urban design offices to identify where improvements could still be made, while still adhering to the constraints of the outlined planning permission. For example, the roundabout near the local centre has been replaced by an attractive informal square or piazza, which will act as a focal point for the whole development. Other improvements include the introduction of street trees, as well as edge lanes in key locations. These were not shown in the design code or master plan, but it is agreed these are significant improvements and will help to make the development better and add to the many positive design features of the original plans, such as the large amount of open space and the creation of new vistas that highlight local landmarks such as St Wolfram's Church. These features will help to create a unique sense of place and create an attractive and sustainable environment, particularly for those who live there, but also for the wider community. The benefits of the scheme are significant. 
Many of these benefits are controlled either by condition or through the Section 106 agreement and include the following. Provision of 480 sustainable homes, including affordable rented and shared ownership ones. The provision of a new school. The applicants will provide a service site as well as contribute £3 million towards its provision. The provision of a local centre to serve the needs of the new community, as well as the existing a large amount of open space and landscaping, including 16 hectares of parkland, three hectares of formal recreation space, three play areas, a community orchard, allotments, a contribution of 250,000 for cycleway improvements, a 300,000 pound contribution for bus service improvements, and a contribution of 217,000 for health improvements. Another significant benefit is that the open space will be landscaped and managed to optimise its biodiversity value. We trust members of the committee will acknowledge the many benefits of this scheme seconds. and agree with their officers and approve this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mann. So we move on to questions. Does any member of the committee have any questions for Mr Mann, please? Shelley, are there any, is there any member indicated in the chat box they wish to ask any questions of the applicant? Um, I cannot see any indication of any questions for the applicant. Uh, uh, Councillor Reid has just put speak, but I'm not sure whether that's for the officer or for the agent. It's I'm sure he'll tell us. <laughs> <laughs> it is for the agent. Um, in the presentation, I was trying to do a quick checklist. It could have been there, uh, but I couldn't. I uh, didn't actually recollect um, a contribution for education. Was it in that presentation? I was checking them all off to do with um, uh, health and um, green space and everything else is it three million yes it's three million at the top there yeah thank you it's the only thing i didn't see that's good no question thank you. the thank presentation you went off so quickly i just didn't quite grab them all at once thank you robert thank Mr. you Chairman, excuse me my um chat box isn't moving up again as it should it's uh council gaby brown here have you a question oh. for the applicant's agent uh, rosemary Yes, I have actually. Thank you. Go, go ahead. Um, my, my question to the agent is, and, and I'll thank him for the presentation. I think it was really quite good. Um, but my question to him is, he has listened. I think he'd been advised in advance anyway, and he's listened today that we do need more, um, more, more. Um, houses bungalows well bungalows particularly and more amenities for the disabled um we are getting to li live longer in most cases sorry question um, please rosemary right the question is Debate, are they yeah. going to participate adding some bungalows or changing some of it round so we can have bungalows because we need them on this estate mr man are you able to respond to that um Yes, I think in respect of the, our scheme at Manthorpe, that's before members today, that it has pointed out, it does not include any bungalows whatsoever. However, but as, as members will appreciate, we do have schemes where we provide uh, bungalows for the over 55s, uh, examples being at Baston, for example, in Bourne. Uh, they're, as I said, they're predominantly bungalows, etc., uh, for the over 55s. Uh, on this scheme, it was thought that, yeah, it's more it was actually better in terms of two-story homes and things like that uh, right from the start the original scheme uh, that we had for this site did include what we call a ccrc which would have included you know uh, accommodation uh, for the elderly including bungalows uh, and even a care home but as i say with the development of this scheme uh, and the fact that it's been reduced in scale quite significantly those elements, unfortunately, had to be removed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Any further questions, Shelley, to members of the, sorry, to uh, the applicant's agent? Uh, we have Councillor Penny Mills. Is it a question to the applicant's agent, Penny? Um, yes, it is, please. <clears throat> um, going back to bungalows, um, which is something we seem to have a, an issue with, it's one thing to provide a um, a bungalow complex, but 
There's also a requirement to have bungalows intermingled with the younger people. It's a Penny, we're into debate. This is a debate issue. The question to Mark is, please. My question is, um, how much consideration, Mark, do you give to that? Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, in, in respect of coming uh, forward with the design of the scheme and the sort of like style of houses and also the form of those houses, i.e., you know, uh, the provision of bungalows, one of the key constraints is obviously making sure that um, the, the, the layout works in design terms, etc., uh, and it meets the needs as well. Um, as I say, we do provide bungalows elsewhere in the district, and to some extent, as a, a, a house builder, we have provided for that need. As you'll appreciate, there are quite significant costs associated with this development at Manthorpe, not least of which is, you know, the provision of schools, the vast amounts of landscaping, etc. So therefore, each building, each unit on that site really has to work hard in terms of uh, generating enough money to actually pay for all those section 106 contributions so it's a bit of give and take if we put more bung if we put introduce bungalows onto the site one they're obviously going to be more costly because as i say the nature of bungalows are costly but also they may not generate enough uh, uh cash to then pay for all the section 106 contributions three million pound for the schools the bus services the health facilities etc and so yeah it, it is a compromise i accept Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, next uh, member to question, uh, for a question to Mark, please, uh, Shelley. Councillor Ian Selby. Question, Ian, without any preamble, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I did have two questions, but one I shall keep for the planning officer. I believe Councillor Dilts is in, in the queue before me. Um, yeah, my question is... Mark, um, thank you for your comments and everything. Um, I don't know whether you're a local chap or not, but there's two big issues with this, and, and the one issue I want to ask yourself is, is regarding the traffic infrastructure, and you felt that uh, that it was um, the layout and everything was acceptable. Um, I'm going to suggest to you, uh, Mark, with, with local knowledge... Can we have a question, please? Without oh, the, These yeah, are points for debate. Yeah. Councillor Stokes picked up on the point that I wanted to raise, and it's regarding that main the, the, the junction at Great Gonaby and also the, the other junction on the other road going to Belton. There should be traffic lights, in, in my view, at both ends. Uh, this is going to have a major impact on the area with 480 properties. Uh, Mark, do, do you really think that the highway should, should be put in a, a better um, a, a, Traffic calming measures for those areas, in particular, so that one at Great Gunner, it'll be an absolute nightmare at that junction. I appreciate your comments on that, please, Mark. Yeah. Well, as you'll appreciate, Councillor, those issues were actually considered in detail at the uh, planning appeal and the public inquiry that was held into it. Um, and basically, the outline application does consider those elements. Uh, and in respect of uh, the improvements to the Gonaby uh, Junction, uh, that's that's a requirement. So they are covered. Um, so, yeah, that was considered and it was found to be acceptable, subject to certain amounts of mitigation, etc. Thank you, Mark. With respect to that, I wasn't on the planning committee at that particular time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ian. Thank you, Mark. Uh... Harish, question please. Question without preamble, please, Harish. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I've got two questions, one to, to the agents, one to uh, the officer. But first, two to the agents. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for Harish, your presentation. Harish, please, this is a question to the applicant's agent, not to the case officer. So, one at a time, please. Thank you. Don't you feel that you're introducing a kind of segregations, you know, in a community of 480 houses here, that you're segregating the elderly uh, from it. The, the community will be benefit better when we have a, a complete uh, sections of the community living in the same area. Harry, Harris, that's not really a question. We're looking at the application before us. All the design and everything has gone through all its stages. Uh, and I don't really think we can 
get into a debate at this point in time on this application with, reg with uh, respect to mix. I think you can make that point in debate when we start looking or when other applications come before us, but I don't think that really is a, uh, a question that uh, we should ask uh, Mr. Mann to answer in respect of this application. We've got to make a decision on the application before us. Are there any other speakers, Shelley? Uh, any questions, please, to the agent? No further questions to Bob, the agent. Bob, I am now, now. I've now got some sound back. Thank you, Jackie. Can Good you to, hear me? Yes, we can indeed. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Super. Thank you, Jackie. OK, Mr. Mann, thank you very much for your time and answering those questions for us. Very much appreciated. Um, thank you. We can now move on to uh, questions to the case officer, please. And please, can we have questions? The points we're making about mix and all the rest of it, legitimately made in debate, but we want questions on further clarification uh, on the application before us, please. We've got Councillor Phil Dilks. Councillor Dilks, Phil, please, a question to the case officer. Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. And thank you uh, for all the presentations that we've had this morning. And I do um, appreciate the passion and concerns from Grantham members or local members uh, to the site. Um, I particularly welcome um, what we've seen about the. Um, I'm sorry to be a sorry to be a pain, but I'm asking. I'm moving on. Yeah, please question, please. Otherwise, uh... my question relates to the tree-lined avenues, which I welcome. And I'm sure we all do. But could you clarify, clarify, please, uh, Phil, Phil Moore, um, were the tree-lined avenues in the outline consent? Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Phil Moore, please. Well, yeah, thank you, Chairman. The, the, the outline consent, um, as you'd appreciate, was uh, we're not looking at that necessarily at that level of detail in the outline consent. There was a number of parameters that were set, uh, which means that the reserve matters have to be broadly in line with those parameters. There was nothing in the outline that says it has to be tree line avenues. Equally, there was nothing in the outline that would stop it from having tree line avenues. So, as a detailed matter of design, we felt that. It could be improved with tree line avenues, and that's how that came came about. Thank you very much. Okay, Phil. I think uh, Phil, yeah. we listened to a discussion on this at Design Pad, uh, and again, I think we're very grateful to both Richard Shaw and David Singleton for bringing these things in at this stage to make the uh, the development uh, a better looking one than it might have been. And thank you to yes, the indeed. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you to the uh, the applicants for listening and doing something about it, which is uh, equally important. Shelley, any further questions to the uh, to the uh, case officer, please? Yes, we have Councillor Ian Selby next. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you Chairman, um, and thank you very much, Phil, for your presentation. My question to you is this, Phil: Can you tell us what what the distance is, please? from the new development to the existing development to the south. Um, that's in relation to the landscape corridor, corridor that you mentioned in your presentation. I believe that ground slopes away slightly. Um, what, is, what will the landscaping corridor consist of, please? Um, and uh, you know, I'm thinking of uh, trying to prevent some overlooking of the existing developments um, in, say, in relation to that, please, Phil. Thank you. Are you able to answer that off the hoof on the hoof? I, I can try, yeah. So I can't give you the exact distance. I think it's around 30 metres, a 30 metre um, corridor. That corridor, as I mentioned in the presentation, is not part of this reserve matters application. That will be subject to a, a future, um, another reserve matters or full application. Uh, and the actual landscaping that goes in there will be determined at that time. But we expect it to be. Uh, a, a, you know, a mixture of meadows and uh, trees and shrubs be a good buffer between the existing development and the proposed development. Thank you very much, Bill. I think that's very important. Thank you. Okay, and I mean, no doubt if you want uh, more specific, Ian, you can take it up with Phil outside the meeting. Yep. Okay. Uh, any further questions, please, Shelley, to the case officer? Councillor Bisnath Singh. Harish, please, Councillor Bisnath Singh. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Phil, co co continuing from the Councillor Phil Dilk's uh, work of questions, it's welcome with LCC allowing the uh, trees planting along the roadside. Is that going to be totally lifted for all other applications as and we expect that to be the case now? Harish, we're talking about this one. If we want to uh, talk about future applications and uh, there will be an opportunity to do that. But I think the answer with David Singleton and Richard Shaw, I'm pretty sure the answer to that is yes, we will be looking at more landscaping on these major developments, Harish. Uh, Phil, do you, do you want to add to that? Uh, not a lot, I don't think. No, I agree with that. That's, that's uh, something that you'll see much more of in the future. Thank you, Phil. Happy with that, Harish? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would love to see more of it because the quality of our air is actually deteriorating, like today overcast. Okay, Phil, uh, uh, Harish, Harish, we're not, we're not debating, please, sir. Are you happy with the response to your question? Thank you. Any further questions to the case officer, please, Shelley? No further questions indicated, Chairman. Thank you. Phil, would you like to move back to the one or two points raised by Councillor Ian Stokes? Yes, certainly. Um, so the first question was about had, was the relevant condition on the outline complied with in terms of were reserve matters submitted within the three years specified? And the answer to that is yes, yes, they were. It requires an application to be submitted within the three years. The, within the lifetime of the application itself, it's, as with any application, it's possible to make amendments, but the application itself has to be within three years. So yes, that was complied with. There was a question about the 106. Why wasn't that mentioned in, in the report? Um, I, I think it was mentioned in there, uh, but uh, it wasn't. It, we didn't go into great detail about it because this is a reserve matters application. The 106 was attached to the outline permission, which is already granted. And as the agent, as the applicant said in his uh, presentation, he spelled out all of the, the section 106 requirements that were attached to the outline. So we're not looking. We're not looking at this stage at the section 106. We're purely looking at um, details of design, and uh, same with the issues of traffic, air quality, etc. That that were that were brought up. Um, those issues were all settled at the appeal at the public inquiry. They were looked at in great detail, forensic detail at the public inquiry, and you know whilst the, the concerns of the members and, and the local residents is obviously uh, important. Um, those matters are settled. We can't revisit them. This is purely about the reserve matters that's in front of you today, i.e. Um, landscape, scale, appearance uh, and, and layout. They, and um, the, the noise issue is, is related to that as well, because that's all to do with layout. But all those other issues already addressed at outline stage. We can't revisit them at this stage. Thank you, Phil. So that's uh, dealt with questions to the agent and to the case officer. Can we move on to a debate? Are there any speakers in debate, please, Shelley? Nobody has indicated at this moment. No, Chairman. Could I? Paul, have... can I speak, please? Yes, Helen. No, Jackie. Uh, Councillor Crawford's name in the chat box. Yes, Jackie. Um, yes. Um, um, I'd really like to. Um, it's a bit so difficult because I haven't heard anything else that's gone on. Um, I just wonder what. Sorry, sort of... sorry to interrupt, but if Councillor Jackie, it's Martha. Apologies, Chairman, but, and apologies to interrupt, Councillor Smith. But if you haven't heard all that's been said, then you can't take part in this item. Yeah, but it's in my ward. Uh, apologies, but we're talking about the the constitution, uh, Jackie, as far as the council is concerned. Sorry, Martha. Apologies for interrupting, but yeah, just to clarify that obviously, if um, Councillor Smith hasn't heard all of that's been said on this item, then she can't partake in the item. You can't speak well, in the debate or those matter. Contact, uh, the, the people, the... Uh, um... With it outside this meeting, Jackie, will you? I'll try. Okay, well, thank you. Sorry about that. Mr. Ch 
Chairman, um, as I pointed out before... Hang on, Rosemary, please. Councillor Crawford. Helen, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I have to say, since I've been on planning, which isn't that long, um, this is one of the best designs that I've seen for layout. Um, pleased with all the hard work that the officers have participated in to get it to this standard. Also really pleased to see that they've included allotments and a community orchard, which should bring the whole of the area together, hopefully. Um, and with that, I would like to propose that we accept this application. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Uh, Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh, you wish to speak? Harish? Just briefly, Mr Chairman. Yes, I very welcome. I agree with uh, Councillor uh, Crawford. There's been tremendous improvements has been going on with the new areas, allotment areas, and also more green space allocated, cycle routes, and it much, much developed. The only thing that I'm very sad about is this seems to be like, like an introduction of segregations that we don't include our elderly community within a development. I think that served to actually reinforce our community. When children are growing up, they can accept there are the different ranges of people that live within a community, and we develop a mutual respect towards it. I think probably in future, as the developer said, that they have got somewhere else that they are putting for the over 50s. So are we more or less, it's like a d discrimination? We're putting the over 50s in one area and not as part of the mix of our community. So that is one of my uh, side point. And I'll be glad to to, seg uh, to second Councillor Helen's uh, proposal. Thanks. Thank you for that, Harish. I think we all take on board the comments being made about integrated communities and uh, uh, dwellings for the elderly, etc., and dwellings uh, uh, that can adapt and change as people get older. And uh, it, I'm not saying it's new thinking, but uh, it's very in the for forefront of all our minds as the, these applications go forward. And I'm sure in future applications of this type of size or any other, actually, that uh, due consideration will be given to providing bungalows for the for the elderly and the disabled, etc. They're all points being extremely well made. I know they're taken on board by officers and I know they're taken on board by uh, Councillor Reid. Uh, and uh, keep that pressure up. I think it's absolutely right that we do that. Uh, uh, Shelley, any more contributors to the debate, please? Councillor Selby. Mr Chairman, I'm trying to get in and I can't. I'll, uh, as soon as Councillor Selby has spoken, I'll bring you in, Rosemary, if that's all right. Thank you. Councillor Selby, Ian, please. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, excellent comments there from Councillor Crawford. Um, we certainly need to, to move on now, don't we, and, and get what get the best we can with this application. Um, I, as, as, as I've said um, earlier, I, I wasn't on the previous um, planning committee when this uh, went through uh, the various stages. Um, the, you know, the public inquiry and things like that. You know, I, I take on board the heritage group, um, issues that were related to uh, Belton House. Um, there's obviously issues that uh, the wider issues of of the Grantham Hospital uh, and the and the lack of the A and E there, Mr. Chairman, major major impact. And the health trust are going to have to do something. The more houses we build, um, they then they need to justify why that why they're not giving us the services that that, that our town badly needs. Um, I am concerned. I have to say, Mr. Chairman, uh, with the road infrastructure. Um, as I say, I wasn't previously on the planning committee, so I didn't comment then. Um, but yeah, it's going to have a massive, massive impact on on the road infrastructure, in particular, say at, at Great Gonna Bay. Um, and um, th that issue certainly needs to be addressed urgently by the county council. Um, I do welcome the cycleways that's that's uh, proposed with this application. Very much um, uh, welcome those. Um, and I look forward to um, seeing the, um, the landscaping with the landscape corridor uh, in the future. Good comment about the bungalows that was made, lack of bungalows. Um, so, um, so yeah, that needs to be taken on board as well. But um, yeah, as we go on the general outlay, I, th I think Helen summed this up nicely. This is yeah, it is coming along nicely. 
Um, but uh, as I said, the issues that have raised, they certainly need, need to be looked at. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Selby. Ian, uh, points and comments very well made. Uh, Councillor Dilks, Phil, please, I think. I uh, am I right, Shelley? Oh, sorry, K K Councillor Cabry Brown, Rosemary first and then Phil Dilks. Yes, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, I, I'm sorry, but I would like to take this opportunity of pointing out to the developer that even if you provide bungalows and um, accommodation for elderly and disabled people in Bourne and other parts of uh, SKDC, that does not help Grantham one little bit. This is an extremely large site. More thought should have been given to it by the developers for elderly people. We've got elderly people who wish to live at that side of the Grantham town. The other thing I'm going to say, and it is due to infrastructure, it's not really due to the developers entirely, but it is the fact that if anybody wishes to take employment up round here, I suggest if they're living on that estate, they have a large notice put up, I suggest you work in Newark, because they're never going to get into Grantham in the morning. I can assure you we, will have, we have a backlog of traffic now up as far as Belton, so it's going to come right out as far as Barkston, I feel. Um, it, it, this, this has not been thought out properly at all. They shouldn't have got planning permission, but they did. And I am speaking on behalf of all the people that are resident north of Grantham here, not just my own ward. Um, I'm sorry, um, I, I won't be voting for it. I'll probably be the only one that isn't. But um, I really, within my heart, can never approve of this development. So I think it's only fair to tell you. So thank you very much for letting me speak, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. I think in terms of what uh, is put on the development, I think it's inc incumbent on us as members and officers to actually uh, give a very clear indication to developers what we are looking and hoping and expecting to see on these major developments. But that is a uh, conversation for the future. Shelley, are there any further uh, contributors to the debate, please? We've got Councillor Phil Dilts, followed by Councillor Penny Mills. Thank you. Councillor Dilts, Phil, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I've got to say, I, I, I will be supporting Councillor Crawford's um, proposal, um, particularly having seen um, the um, advances that have been made in this application with the tree-lined avenues. I think we're all, you know, getting passionate about those that, that, that they, and all those other things that um, Councillor Helen mentioned, like the allotments and the... Um, other sort of provisions, and, and I wish um, uh, sites a bit nearer to my ward um, uh, had some of those, but we'll come to that in another application. Um, I, I, I do appreciate the passion of um, local members and perhaps those who know the site better than I do, um, but um, you know, whilst this planning authority did um, turn it down originally, it was one on appeal, and we're where we are. Um, you know, it is coming, um, and you know we have to make the best of it. And it seems that our planning team, uh, together with the developers, have, have, if I can say, made a good fist of it. So um, I will be supporting approval. Thank you. Thank you for that, Phil. I think uh, Shelley, you said Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Um, yes, thank you. I was about to say what Phil has just said, really. Um, we are where we are. Um, I think when it comes to these outline permissions, particularly given that appeal, we, we have to take take it on the chin, don't we? And I, I do thank the design team and Phil Moore for um, engaging and making this a, a good scheme. When it comes to highways, which I think is something we all have a problem with, and uh, there is a particular issue with this site going both ways on Belton Lane, and it's been a long-standing issue. You know, we despair, don't we, of highways, really? And I think we need a conversation with highways as to how they do assess these things, because 
I believe that um, they can have some um, discernment between rural and town areas as to what the impact of traffic is, but that's for another occasion. So yes, I think this, is, as the details go, it is, is excellent, and um, I should be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. I think we all might also need to talk to our local member of parliament to get some of the criteria laid down by government change in terms of uh, traffic infrastructure and levels of traffic. But uh, that again is a, another uh, area of discussion and debate for the future. Sh uh, Shelley, are there any further members wishing to contribute? Nothing further, no, Chairman. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, my members, for your uh, questions and uh, contributions to the debate. I now propose to move on to the vote. We have had the, uh, the recommendation uh, proposed by Councillor Crawford, seconded by uh, Councillor Harris Bithnell Singh, uh, that we approve this application subject to the conditions and the amended condition that uh, um, uh, Phil Moore made at, the, uh, at his uh, introduction and presentation to the uh, proposal, to the application. So we'll move on to the vote, please. Uh, do we need a recorded vote, Martha? Yes, please, Chairman. A, a normal vote, as we would already do, going through each member in turn, please. Thank you. So we go to the vote. Uh, Anita, please. Certainly, Mr Chairman. Councillor Bellamy. Four. Councillor Bishnell Singh. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Dilks. Four. Councillor Exton. Four. Councillor Cabry Brown. Against. Councillor Milnes. Four. Uh, Councillor Reed. Four. Councillor Selby. Reluctantly, four. Councillor Judy Smith. Four. Councillor Bob Adams. Four. So that's 10-4 and one against. Thank you, Anita. Look at the number of speakers for the next item. I'm going to uh, move that we have a, a quick five minute comfort break, please. Uh, and what I didn't say in my opening remarks that we would be breaking for lunch at about one o'clock. Uh, so if we can uh, We'll have a quick uh, comfort break for, uh, for uh, five minutes and uh, rejoin. I don't know what's happened. I can only assume that they're having a break. Uh, Jackie, it's Robert calling. Uh, yes, they are having a comfort break just for five minutes. OK. Right. Well, I'm very upset that I haven't been able to vote and all because we've, this system, if it... Um, I mean, that's a major development for I my ward and I haven't been, I I haven't been able to... I do understand. Councillor Smith, just to um, remind you that the meeting is still being recorded and we do still have guests in the meeting. Well, I don't think you've heard that they know how I feel because I'm very upset. And I, I appreciate your, your thoughts. Unfortunately, that is the Constitution, I'm afraid, Councillor Smith.
Okay, members. Uh, hopefully we're all back. Anita, can you do a quick roll call, please? Yes, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Oh, got to roll call. Um, Councillor Bob Adams. Present. Councillor Judy Smith. Uh, Councillor Bellamy. Present. Who, Councillor Bishnar Singh? Present. Councillor Crawford? Present. Councillor Dilks? Present, Mom. Thank you. Councillor Exton? <laughs> Present. Okay. Councillor Kaby Brown? Yes, here. Thank you. Councillor Milnes? Present. Thank you. Councillor Reid? Present. Councillor Selby? I can only just. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith? Present. Thank you. Councillor Judy Smith? Judy, are you with us? Councillor Judy Smith, I've just unmuted your microphone. If you could indicate if you're in the meeting, please. It may be that she's not returned from um, the brief recess, Chairman. OK. Anita, who? We've got 11 members present. Uh, uh, Councillor Morgan uh, isn't in the meeting, so she's okay. got to Cou Councillor Judy Smith. Yes. Yeah, Okay, we'll give it a minute or two for Judy. Or... Chairman, I've just given Judy Smith a call. She's on her way. Thank you for that, Helen. I was just trying to do the same as well. Thank you. Judy, can you uh, tell us when you're back in the meeting, please? I am back, Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. The reminders. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judy. OK, so we're all present again, so we can move on to item five, application S21235. Uh, Phil Jordan, please. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, members. Just uploading the presentation. Just confirm when that's appeared, Chairman. Yes, it has appeared. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. So this next item is S21235. It's the reserve maths application looking at details relating to landscaping, layout, appearance and scale um, pursuant to outline planning permission S172466. So the, the, the outline planning permission in this case granted permission for 145 dwellings, um, 76 of which have already been approved under phase one, and this is phase two, so the, the second half of the development. Uh, the application site is off Lintfield Road in Deeping St James, and I've already been introduced, but I'm Phil Jordan, uh, who's been the case officer for this application. So I'll talk a bit about the principle of development um, that, that was already established through the, the grant of the outline planning permission. So really, we are just looking at um, the detail of design in this case. And I'll, I'll perhaps just talk, touch upon um, drainage as well. But it, again, that's something that was um, assessed and a drainage scheme was secured through the outline consent. So the location plan here, you can see the 
um, the second half of the application site here is uh, outlines in red. Um, there's an access off Birchnell Close and then the uh, Lynchfield Road, which is where the main access into the site is. All of this land in blue, um, including this uh, strip of land that runs around the northern boundary and the western boundary was approved within phase one. So this, um, again, I'll show it a bit more on the on the detailed layout, but this strip of land is effectively a, an IDB easement strip. There's two uh, IDB drains along the north and the, the west of the site, and that, that has a nine metre easement. So similar to the last application, um, that you've been discussing, there was a condition on the outline approval condition four, which um, required the, the principles of this illustrative master plan to be followed at the at the reserve matter stage. So you, you can see it's a fairly detailed illustrative plan um, shown on it is some sort of clearly defined blocks of housing, um, a, a main sort of road that runs through the site, um, LEAP, which is the, the equipped play area. On the other side of that is um, an attenuation feature. And then this sort of strip of, of green space, like I say, that runs around where the, where the easement is to the IDB drain. So phase one was approved under uh, S190443. Um, the, 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 the developer for this scheme is the same developer that um, is currently building out phase one. They purchased the scheme following the, the grant of outline consent. So that they purchased the scheme with the requirements and stipulations that were, that were in place and had been agreed through that outline permission. Um, as, as I said, this phase one has already been approved, um, and that does include the, the details of the play area, um, this drainage feature within the site. And then one of the things that was agreed was to make use of this easement um, that runs across the, I suppose, broadly across the north of the site. A three metre cycleway was, was included. And again, that three metre cycleway sits entirely within the um, phase one development. So phase two, you can see it's uh, um, very much a, a continuation of what's already been approved through um, through phase one. So there's the, the continuation of the, of the main spine road through the site. And then a series of um, turning heads and, and cul de sacs off that main spine road into the site. So, in terms worth looking at this plan, in, in terms of the, the house types, um, it's the same range of house types that were used and approved under phase one. So, it's the same developers, so it's their, their same, same range of, of housing products. Um, the road's been designed as a, a continuation of the of the road that was again approved as phase one. So this sort of shows the, the materials um, distribution through the site, and you can see that um, tried to keep the same character along that main um, spine road through the site, um, and then sort of different use of materials to define different areas within the site um, and again consistent with those that were, were used and approved under under phase one um, one of the sort of changes that was made when i think this was previously debated at committee was the inclusion of some stone houses um, and there were three of the houses under phase one were changed to be stone products and that's been replicated in this phase two submission so um, there's, there's three stone products 
one one of which is this sort of gateway in off Birchnell Close, and then two of the properties that around this sort of square feature that was showed on the illustrative master plan. So th this is the hard landscaping layout. Um, it just gives an idea really of um, the sort of the surface treatments and again how these are used to define street hierarchy and the different um, private and public parts of the um, of, of, of this uh, development. So there is the use of um, block paving within the turning heads to sort of differentiate that from the um, that main spine road. And one of the things that was done here around this square was that block paved area, which is generally a bit more sort of pleasant than the black tarmac, was used around this um, square as well. Just a couple of sort of snips of the um, the soft landscaping proposals. So um, I know there was a discussion sort of in the last item about street trees, and I think you know that's something that I think if we'd started this again, it you know in terms of the current design guidelines, I know this was one of the questions from members. Um, we might have looked to have lined the whole of this street with with trees. Um, but given that you know half of this road has already been granted permission without street trees, and really the second half is just a continuation of that road, it's a, a sort of a, a difficult point to justify. Um, but that said, there are trees within the um, development, both in phase one and phase two. But in this case, they're sited on um, private land. Um, that would be sold to the homeowners and you can just see in some of these sort of snips of the soft landscaping the, the green circles indicate where those trees would be planted. W what we have done um, is used a, a soft front boundary treatment and railings to um, sort of establish that street hierarchy um, and give some character to that main street through the site. So. The majority of these properties um, all the way along that main road have a, a front hedgerow and, and railings to, to give that character. And then this is just where you see it sort of continues and joins back onto phase one. Um, you can see there are more trees planted here, but again, they're within, within the private ownership of the properties. Um, but you, you see that sort of continuation of the, of the hedge uh, front boundary treatment follows through. So in, in terms of a bit of an evaluation, really, um, details obviously in the main uh, report, um, the principle of development was established through the, the grant of the outline consent. Um, this is a reserve matters application looking at appearance, scale, layout, and landscaping. Um, the schemes broadly in accordance with the principles of the illustrative master plan, which was a, a requirement of condition four on the outline consent. Um, there's been some questions about open space, um, sort of revisiting the report that was done for phase one, it was very clear that um, the requirements of the legal agreement in terms of the quantity of open space was all approved within phase one and that complies with the requirements in the legal agreement. Um, so th there isn't any justification for further open space within this part of the development. Um, that provision of open space does meet both the requirements for play space and informal open space, which are, are detailed in the legal agreement. Um, th th there was a question about um, whether the um, SUDS feature, the, the attenuation basin, counts towards that provision. Um, I, I've looked at the, 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 the figures and can say that, you know, with and without the um, attenuation base and it still meets the, the quantitative um, standards that are set in the legal agreement but it, in, in any case um, that attenuation basin does have uh, benefits and, and function as open space and um, members that have attended the design workshops will know that um, 
the design officers and landscape officers sort of now tend to refer to open space as blue and green infrastructure and um, you know a, a drainage feature will have benefits as open space um, even if it's a, a wet pond um, in this case I think it's designed to be most of the time a, a dry pond but serves to attenuate storm water when necessary but um, it, it will still have amenity value um, for the properties that, that front onto it it still creates an open space in, in visual terms within the development and and of course it would have um, some ecology and biodiversity value as well um, I've said already phase one was approved under S19 uh, 0443 and this phase two development has, has really just been designed to be in conformity with the um, with the outline consent and also as a continuation of phase one. Um, that said, the applicant um, has engaged positively with the council um, since I've been the case officer for this application. The first thing they wanted to do was uh, attend the design pad workshop which which they did and as a result of that um, within the context of the, 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 the constraints of the outline consent and, and what's been approved at phase one they, they did agree to make a number of improvements to the scheme um, they're sort of broadly detailed on here it doesn't cover absolutely everything but um, we, we looked at some of the plot accesses um, how they functioned and sort of where homeowners would have to drag bins out onto the street for the collection points. Um, we looked at the building lines around the properties at the front, the open space, tried to make that a bit more consistent and, and a bit more of a, of a, a, of a crescent. Um, I've talked about the, the materials to sort of establish road hierarchy and, and give character. Um, some of the small unmanageable landscape strips were, were designed out um, these have come up and been discussed at committee before. These are the, the very little strips that you sometimes um, see around properties and where, where possible we've tried to design those out. Um, some improvements to the front boundary treatments to, to include that sort of uh, hedging treatment. Um, where some of the properties turn the corners, um, change those to be dual aspect to, to make sure that you know, when viewed from both directions, they they address the street in a positive manner. Um, the materials palette is as per phase one. I've said that there's less properties on this half of the development, um, but the same number of stone properties. So there, there was three included as phase one, and there's, there's three within this phase two. Um, again, did look at some of the parking layouts. Um, that that's been improved again where possible both in terms of again trying to make that on plot and um, relate to the the individual dwellings as best as possible um, for the main spine road through this the site uh, tried to design out lots of frontage parking which can look a little bit unsightly and and bring the you know pr bring the properties where possible close up to that main road to give that positive frontage um, and then just some general improvements to the landscaping scheme um, which is sort of largely around around those boundary treatments and some of the tree planting within the um, within the plots so in summary the recommendation is to uh, approve the scheme as submitted subject to the conditions that are detailed in the main report thank you chairman and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Phil. We'll <clears throat> get to questions shortly. Uh, we have five speakers uh, uh, on this application. Um, just to remind the speakers that you have three minutes and that uh, Shelley will uh, indicate to you when 30 seconds are left. So uh, first speaker is the ward councillor, councillor Judy Stevens. Judy, please. Yes, I'm here. I'm just trying to get my video on, sorry. Um,
Okay, okay, everyone. Hello. Happy, nice to see you. Hi, Judy. Welcome. <laughs> okay, well, cancel it. Right. Um, okay, so I realise that this is just, just in, in, I've just listened to the last application and I realise this is a much smaller application, but it really is very important to the people of Deeping St. James because we haven't had um, too many developments over recent years and this represents the beginning of a very big one. So it is really important that we try to get this as right as we possibly can. So please bear with me on, on this. Obviously, we are just looking really to make some conditions on the application to make it more palatable for local residents because there has been a considerable loss of amenity. Um, this has been open space for as long as we can remember. People have loved it to walk their dogs and go for walks and so on. They will no longer have that. When I last came to the um, this committee, when you discussed the first phase, I was left with the idea that you were going to have four stone houses um, within the first phase. Now I understand it's actually three. Um, I would like to see four. We've got we're looking at 145 houses all told here. So actually to try and reflect the local vernacular with some stone and um, just to have three in, in each of them is, is, is quite derisory in my view. And um, we're looking at beauty here. We're looking at moving the whole perspective of design and the building of estates forward. So let's at least have four in each development. So that would be another two. And I think I'm being extremely generous by just asking for another another two um, in this in the second phase but I think we should at least condition for that um, today um, when you talk about the the, uh, the feature square I did envisage a, a tree-lined boulevard leading up to a square with trees and benches now I think street furniture is really important if this if this is taught us anything in this lockdown it is that keeping people isolated in their own homes is not a good good idea so i think we need to with our planning and i'm sure that you've discussed this as a, as a group but certainly within planning we can facilitate better mental health and so i think we need to look at having street furniture um, if we possibly can as well as um, the trees, the tree line boulevard. It's a shame they're not in phase one. I don't see any reason why that doesn't mean they can't be in phase two. If you put them in people's private gardens, they can chop them down as soon as the leaves get in their way. I think that's not an adequate um, resolution for that particular problem. So I would like to see more tree planting along those boulevards. The other, the other thing similar to the last application is bungalows. We were, we thought we were going to be six bungalows, and I think this has now been reduced to four. We, we are an ageing population, sadly. When the neighbourhood plan did their consultation, bungalows were what people wanted. We've only got four. Again, we've got 145 properties here. I, I really don't like them being called housing products because they sound. Can you like wind up, please? The three minutes is gone. So, um, and so, yeah, bungalows as well. Um, and yeah, and also the tandem parking is also an issue. And thanks very much indeed. I'm sure you'll give it your best thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Sorry we had to cut you short. Um, next speaker, please, is Kate Shinkins. Is it Hop or Hope? I'll, I'll just call you Kate and then I won't get into any trouble. <laughs> Kate? Shinkins Hoppe. Hoppe. Well, yes. I'll call you Kate and then I'm not into any trouble. That's fine. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you and uh, hello everybody. Um, I'm Chair of Planning at Dean St James Parish Council. So over the last few days I've been working closely with the two district councillors who work very hard for the people of Deeping St James. As a result I feel that there's a need to change the paper that I originally submitted to you um, because the work that they've done so far has overtaken, overtaken some of the points I raised. As you'll be aware throughout this development the Parish Council have been concerned about the following, the lack of public open space and the poor design of the whole development. Many of the questions that have been raised by council Dilks and Councillor Stevens has reinforced the issues raised by the Parish Council. Some of those issues go back to phase one of the development and it was hoped that when phase two came along, the forward, came forward for planning permission, these issues would have been acknowledged and some improvements could have been expected. Sadly, phase two is not um, has not originally offered any improvements with regards to public open space or the general design. The work which has been taking place between the planning offices, the developer and the district councils has resulted in some improvements being put forward. However, the parish council is still particularly concerned about the following areas. The water drainage system means that there is an area for water surplus, which should remain dry throughout the year. 
We are all aware of global warming and the extreme weather conditions. Recently, this area suffered 10 inches of rain in two months, almost the average rainfall for the whole year. There are no plans to fence off this area. This concerns the Parish Council. This is a residential development providing housing for families. What protection will there be to stop young children accessing the potentially dangerous part of the site? The second thing is the impact of the character on the area. This second phase will impact greatly on the local character. The houses are being built closely together as the developers had to take into account the two public footpaths across the site and the drainage area. The lack of planned open space away from the public footpaths is de detrimental to the overall aspect of the development. The people of Deeping St James have lost access to playing fields at the Deeping School, which historically provided space for ball games and general exercise. The proposed new leisure centre for the Deepings does not provide any additional public open space. The need for physical exercise and mental well-being must be considered. The adjacent site is scheduled, scheduled to have a development of a further 680 homes. Pol um, policy uh, DEP 1H2 makes reference to this. The Parish Council are concerned that Lynchfield Road cannot cope with existing traffic plus the additional traffic from this new development. It is therefore vital that any new development makes provisional for additional traffic and more open space. A holistic approach is needed to protect the character of our village. The Parish Council appreciates the work completed so far in aiming to approve this development. However, when compared against the newer legislation which is proposed, in, i.e. the current draft design code, this development appears to fall short of their requirements. In addition, we would suggest that Chapter 12 of the MPPF achieving well designed points A to F have not been achieved. Our neighbourhood plan, Policy DPN 8, refers to the local character and settlement structure and states. New development should respect the historic character of the local area in terms of form, density, style, height, scale, orientation, plot sizes and positions to existing buildings. Development should not be designed to, be designed to stand alone, additional with no clear relationship to the existing settlement in terms Good. of its character. Could you wind up, Kate, please? Certainly. The Parish Council does not feel this development meets the requirements of the policies. The Parish Council therefore asks that all conditions requested with the aim of making the necessary improvements are put into place. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, we have two or three further speakers, uh, Councillor Baxter and uh, Virginia Moran. I'll take ladies first. Councillor Moran, please. Uh, thanks, Bob. Um, Kate has actually covered a lot of what I wanted to discuss, um, so I'll veer away from my um, published document that I sent you. Um, Obviously, I represent the ward which immediately abuts this development. Um, my biggest concern um, is the lack of connectivity. At the far west of the site, at the end of the spine road, is a dead end. Um, if you could stand at the end of that spine road, you would be able to see across a very narrow field the doctors and the only supermarket that serves the whole of the deepings. Um, as it stands at the moment, there's no provision for leaving that open so that when the next development is done, there is connectivity through to the public rights of way. It would take from the end of the Spine Road to go to Tesco approximately a four minute cycle ride or a 10 minute walk. The alternative is to get in your car, drive all the way down the Spine Road, come out onto Lynchfield Road, turn left, go to the end of Lynchfield Road, turn left again to the bottom and carry on to the bottom of Godsey Lane, turn left again to get to the doctors and then just beyond it to the local supermarket. We really need to be giving people every opportunity to walk and cycle to local amenities. And this, along with the massive amount of houses that they're cramming in here, um, just doesn't bode well at all. Um, the other point is all this tandem parking Tandem parking won't be used. What will happen is one car will go in the drive, so they've always got access to it. The other one will go on the road. This is apparently supposed to go, going to be a bus route. If you've got cars parked either on the pavements illegally um, or on the road outside, even if it's only at one house in five, you're going to have a hell of a job on to get a bus through, let alone bin wagons, emergency services and stuff like that. Um, and I do not want this type of development to set a precedent for the 600 nod that we're going to have in the next couple of years. Um, 
because we can't carry on like this, making these little boxes out of tiki tacky and cramming in as many people as we can with no thought to good design. I know we've got a design statement coming up, design guidelines, and they look great. There's some lovely ideas in there to create a lovely place for people to live instead of these just crammed in sites with, you know, no thought for actual people and all the thought is for profit. So thank you. Um, that's my point. Thank you, Virginia. Councillor Baxter, Ashley, please. Uh, th thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, before I start, could I ask members to turn to page 26 in their uh, packs if they haven't already, which is a, a map that goes slightly wider than the one that was in the presentation that, that Phil Jordan uh, put up. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm starting now. Uh, when you look at this application, you think, would, would I want to buy a house on here or or would I be happy if my, my children or my grandchildren uh, were were on there? And at the moment, it's a kind of not really. Uh, it could be. A, yes, definitely. It's the difference between adequate housing and, and beautiful and and really good housing. Um, I'm echoing some of the points made by the other speakers, but when you look at that map, there's a piece of land between Market Deeping and uh, this development, uh, which eventually will get built on. It's a little square to the to the to the west of this development, and I can't work out how that will ever be accessible. Um, I don't understand. Um, please, please uh, explain later. I don't understand how somebody could drive a car to one of the houses in what you might call phase three to the west of the development from the development you've done at the moment. You, we've got lots of cul-de-sacs and no connectivity, as uh, Virginia mentioned. I think we have, there is a cycle path, or, or please confirm that there's a cycle path to the north of the, the site, but how do you get to it from these houses uh, with the cul-de-sac? There's, there's no uh, cut-throughs for pedestrians or, or cyclists. Uh, so, um, the other thing is the, the layout and the feel of the site. The housing minister recently said that he wished, wished to see beautiful uh, planning. And I don't think this is beautiful. And I think if if it was possible to get our, as, as Judy said, the, the tree-lined avenues into the development and a, a little bit more thought about how the, the curves and the angles were put together and how, how the whole thing relates to the um, the play area and the open space. It, it, it could be so much better, um, but it seems to have been, the, the number of houses seems to have been the priority. And that's why you've also ended up with these tandem tandem car parking spaces where you've got a garage and in front of your garage is your car or, or your second car and in front of your second car is your third car. Uh, and we know that if you want to get something out of the garage, you you would have to move the cars all around. That will inevitably mean that people park on the pavement or park on the road, which will mean that there's less chance for children to play on the road or, or, or people to push push chairs along the road. And it all becomes a vicious circle working against pedestrians, cyclists and children playing. I think uh, the committee should send the developers back to the literally back to the drawing board uh, and, and see if we can come up with a better a, arrangement and alignment learning from the mistakes that have been made in other parts of market deeping and in other parts of the of the district uh, thank you chair thank you ashley uh, could we move on please to the applicant's agent uh, georginia mccray please george uh, georginia Georgina, Mr. Sorry. Chairman, um, sorry to interject. I just wondered um, if, there, if Phil Jordan might just have a plan uh, that does show the site in context with market deeping services. Okay. Are you able to do that, Phil? Sorry, yeah, I think in Georgina's um, description of the site, there's, there's a photo that shows the site in a bit more context but um, while she's going through her um, speech and I've got those slides up I can get get a, um, a sort of like a Google image as well so if if someone wants to refer to anything in the wider context they they can do as well helpful thank you mr. chairman fine uh, Georgina please 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, members, and thank you for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Georgie McRae. I'm the Planning Manager at This Street East Midlands, formerly Linden Homes. As we're aware, Linden Homes purchased the site following approval of Outline Planning Commission in November 2018. You may recall I presented to this committee in September 2019 following your approval of the Phase 1 Reserve Matters proposals. Works commenced on site shortly after and the first new homes are now occupied. The application before you today seeks approval for the reserve matters of appearance, landscaping, layout and scale for the remainder of the site. This comprises 69 units, two, three and four bedroom homes and includes four bungalows and 35% affordable housing. As advised in your officer's report, we've engaged positively positively with the Council during the application since the submission in July last year. This includes attending a design pad workshop which resulted in a number of amendments to the proposals and working closely with your urban design officer. Your officer concludes the scheme before you today will provide a good quality design and a development that will be appropriate and integrate well with the surrounding context. The internal layout and amenity space are considered to be appropriate and level of amenity for future occupiers with no adverse impacts on existing residents. Issues raised during the Phase 1 Planning Committee, including the use of stone and widening the footway cycleway to three metres, have been incorporated into the Phase 2 proposals. The scheme also continues to comply with the outlined public open space requirements, including the provision of a children's play area, as well as Section 106 contributions totalling around £1 million towards health, education and public transport infrastructure. We therefore respect, respectfully request you grant permission in line with your officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Georgina. So we now move on to questions. Does um, any, any member of the committee have any questions for Georgina, please? Shelley, anybody in the chat box? Yes, Councillor Phil Dilts. Councillor Dilts, Phil, please. Yes, thank you. Um, and, and thank you, Georgina. Um, and Phil, uh, a few presentations. Um, and, and may I say all uh, um, councillor colleagues um, uh, across the deepings. Um, I appreciate, Georgina, that building 145 homes will inevitably cause some local issues, but I'm concerned to alleviate the inconvenience to local residents as much as possible uh, during the, especially as phase two groundworks gets underway. So may I ask, would you be willing to sign up to a construction management plan for phase two? If so, would you be willing for that to include on-site wheel washes undertakings to remove mud on the roads dumped by your machinery and would you be willing to agree to a condition that from now on you'll use the excellent new access that you've provided into the site directly from Lynchfield Road that Phil described as the main um, access into the site um, rather than using the access down Birchnell Close and Campion Drive which is through the neighbouring established housing development which has caused inconvenience and some conflict with local residents during phase one building. And also, I, I just understand that the Sorrel Close area, just currently, uh, uh, which is just keep, further keep, west keep, from Birchnell, is currently please, suffering please, from... I'm obviously sorry, did you stop me? Yeah, I just want to keep it to questions, Phil, please. Well, that is a question. That, that's my first... That's, that's a question. And, and the second, if, if I may, Mr Chairman, it's just... There is a, um, a current invasion of rats, mostly migrants, from the site, I believe, by construction. And I'm wondering if Georgina could just say whether she's aware of that and what steps you might take um, to assist local residents dealing with that problem. I do have a second question on the design, but I'll pause there, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Georgina, would you like to respond to that so far? Yes, thanks, Councillor Dilts, for your um, question. Firstly, just like to apologise, obviously, for the inconvenience caused um, while we've been using the, the Birchnell Close access. Obviously, most of you are probably aware that the the bridge is now constructed off Lynchfield Road, but it, it has meant all construction traffic going through uh, Birchnell Close into the site to um, to be able to construct that that point of access. Um, we have tried to uh, engage positively and respond to complaints as and, as and when they come in. Um, and I hadn't heard of any for, for a few months until I spoke to um, 
uh, the planning officer, Phil Jordan, uh, ahead of this committee. So if, if it's something that members feel they they need to add in terms of a condition for a construction management plan to be agreed with the local authority, then we would, of course, be willing to accept that on um, the approval of the reserve matters. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you uh, with my second word, thank you, um, Georgina. Um, appreciate that, and I do appreciate that you have collaborated with our planning team and made improvements to your plans um, through the life of the application, and notably at the PAD. Um, but having concer heard concerns of all my councillor colleagues this morning, um, who have come together um, in in this um, um, application, and hopefully you've also seen my questions and answers that were submitted um, uh, prior to today's meeting. I wondered if you'd respond to those uh, concerns raised, and more importantly, what could you offer today as further improvements to the scheme to make it more acceptable, not just to members of this committee, but to the whole of the Deepings community who are going to have to live with it for uh, future generations. And whilst I welcome, for example, whilst I welcome the six stone houses out of, you know, it's only six out of 145. Could you perhaps um, uh, um, include a few more? And could you make more of the off-street um, parking spaces non-tandem? That is a big issue. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Georgina? Yeah, thanks again for your uh, question, Councillor Dilks. Obviously, we've, we've listened to um, all, the, all the comments made this morning. Um, and obviously, I, I was at the phase one planning committee and know how important the design was to members at that point, particularly in terms of the addition of stone um, to the materials palette on the development. And we did respond to that by adding um, the three stone units on phase one. We then obviously replicated that onto the, the phase two uh, proposals. Obviously, heard Councillor Judy Stevens' um, request for another two plots to be added. Um, uh, for those to be fronted in stone, sorry. Um, and again, if, if members felt that was um, required to make the, the proposals acceptable, then of course we, we would accept a further two plots on phase two. Um, so a, a condition can be added to that effect. Um, I think other, um, other points that were raised, particularly in terms of uh, street furniture, I think it, it's a good point and it's something we could add to the feature square in phase two, uh, particularly in terms of uh, a seating area. It would be good to, to use that feature square, seeing as it's been designed for that purpose. Um, I think other points in terms of the, the parking provision, we have worked hard to make sure it, the, there's a few things we had to balance, both in terms of uh, complying with the outline master plan, um, avoiding frontage parking on the spine road, and um, making sure that, that uh, all units kind of front, front all the public realm uh, elevations. So it, it's been a bit of a, a balance and a compromise, but we do feel that all spaces are conveniently positioned to, to the plots. There are some uh, tandem parking spaces, but we've tried to avoid triple tandem parking onto the spine road. Um, and we've made sure that the driveways are wide enough for, for bins to be uh, dragged to the frontage of properties and for, for anything coming out of the garage to be um, to be able to be dragged past cars uh, without the need for moving them uh, every time. So. Um, yeah, the, the parking, there is there is a mixture of uh, parking provision, but we do feel that, that it's acceptable and it complies with the outline planning permission. Thank you, Georgina. Yes, thanks, Georgina. Uh, just uh, before I ask for the next uh, questions, Phil Jordan, are there any issues or problems with uh, incorporating those conditions? No, I mean, I think what I picked up there is that um, the developer would be happy with a construction management plan condition which we've got a standard wording for that and that would pick up on much of the detail that Councillor Dilks has um, referenced in terms of routes into the site, wheel washing facilities and, and, um, and the like. Um, likewise the materials, um, we, we can include a, a fairly standard condition which captures um, Notwithstanding materials submitted or already, you know, further details and, and to be explicit about um, 
two two further um, houses with stone if, if that was what was um, what was requested and, and felt to be necessary and it, it, it sounds like the developer was happy with that um, again the street furniture we can add a condition that picks up on sort of over and above the hard landscaping details already approved further details of um, street furniture seating etc um, that, that's quite you know quite a level of detail but doesn't didn't appear to pose any sort of um, problems or difficulties with the developer um, the, the the parking's a bit more difficult and um, you, you do start getting into you know moving the layout around quite significantly and um, we have done quite a bit of work on on the parking and you know that that is um, felt to be acceptable both by the highway authority in, in terms of um, you know the overall provision and highway safety matters as well as by the urban design officers and th th that um, you know to sort of push further on that um, we haven't really got any justification to, to to do that beyond what we've already got so I, I, I think I would agree that on that point it, it is a bit more difficult but certainly those first three items that were mentioned they can be included as um a, you know further conditions on on top of the recommendation that's in the main report thank you phil so there's nothing really that would uh, prevent us from uh, approving the application with the conditions uh, as printed and those additional ones yeah that yes thank you okay uh, shelley any further questions to uh, georgina please uh yes we've got councillor robert reed Councillor Reid, Robert, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, I was going to ask the question as to access because I am also aware of the uh, the difficulties and unpleasantness of, for the residents on Birchnell Close, um, having visited there. Um, so um, I'm sure we will get that announcement out since it's been made. Secondly, um, I was also going to um, ask a question as to further design criteria and similarly um, in putting my um, question in the chat box uh, that has been expanded on in a satisfactory way so um, uh, I will therefore spend uh, my conversation in debate thank you thank you Robert uh, Shelley any further questions to Georgina please uh, Councillor Harish Bisnath Singh. Councillor Bisnath Singh, Harish, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wonder, thank you, Georgina. I wonder if you would like to accept the further conditions of adding like electric charging points uh, for the, for cars within the, uh, the developments uh, on it to abate with the climate change program. Thank you, Harish. Georgina, are you able to respond to that? Hi, Harish. Thanks for your question. Um, it, it is something that, that obviously uh, the outline planning permission was approved prior to the um, requirements of electric car charging points. Um, and obviously the, the electrical capacity for the site has been um, established and the substation is in place now. So um, it's not something we'd be able to agree to on uh, phase two. Um, but what I would say is that the, the garages are provided with electricity. So it's not it's not something that future residents wouldn't be able to incorporate themselves subject to capacity at the time. Thank you, Georgina. Any any further questions to the uh, applicant, Shelley? I can't see any questions to the applicant, no, but uh, Councillor Penny Mills has put a comment in, but I'm not quite sure. Um, I've seen that now. I'm yeah. not quite sure what it means. Can we move on then to uh, questions yeah. to the case officer? Are there any questions? I can't see any questions directed uh, to the case officer, no, Chairman. Can I explain, Ms Penny, what I mean? If you wish, Penny. Um, Robert mentioned he'd put something about design comments in the chat box that had been answered. I, I can't see it anywhere. Am I missing but, uh, a trick? Or... I don't think Robert said that, to be honest, uh, Penny. Um, and. 
and uh, and unless the qu unless the question is uh, in open committee, the chat box is not the place to be putting or challenging or questioning uh, what somebody might have said or might not have said, Penny, or might have m meant to say. Sorry, so. I, I must have got it wrong. I'm sorry about that. Okay, no problem. No problem. Right, can we move on to debate then? Um, uh, Thank, sorry, Georgina, thank you very much for being with us and answering those questions so openly and honestly. Very much appreciated. Uh, can we move on to uh, debate then, please? Are there any speakers or members wishing to contribute to debate, please? Councillor Phil Dilks. Councillor Dilks in debate, please. Yeah, thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, um, uh, thank you. Um, I think we've made some progress this morning. I, I did request a construction management plan because as one of the three uh, ward councillors for Dean St James, I've raised concerns on behalf of local residents, as I know Councillor Stevens and others have, uh, particularly during the early groundworks of phase one um, of, of this scheme. There were complaints of early morning construction disturbance, large noisy machinery, using quiet estate roads and mud on roads, including, and I've got photographs of them, numerous bucket-sized lumps of mud on Lynchfield Road. Um, and can I just say to Georgina, each time I might say um, the um, um, contractors have dealt with them when raised, in, in my case anyway, speedily and courteously and, and professionally, and they've, and they've dealt with the problem there and then. Um, and I do say thank you for accepting the um, uh, condition um, that I hope we'll put on for um, making the access from now on through Lynchfield, through the... Um, through the main access and not down the estate roads. I, I welcome the two extra stone homes that you've agreed to and the improved street furniture. Um, can I just say the site was originally owned, just by a bit of background, was originally owned by the United Charities organisation in my ward, um, where I'd been a trustee for several years, as is Kate, who spoke for the parish council so well, and Judy, who spoke well, a former long-standing member of this committee who also spoke earlier. And at the time of the outline plan, before the present applicants were involved, um, we were all written to by the original company working with the trustees to bring the site forward for development. And we were warned that we had a legal obligation to do everything in our power to support their application. I refused to be intimidated by that in that way. And I resigned as a trustee on the day of the, of the outline application uh, that came to committee so I could speak my mind freely without threat of legal action. Among the issues raised at the time, among the issues I raised at the time was a lack of open space, um, and I would say, um, as a current member of the Welland and Deepins um, Internal Drainage Board, I could see that the nine-metre easement along the entire length of, and one side of the site significantly reduces the building area. Um, but of course, the applicants would have been aware of that when they purchased the site. Um, so I'm disappointed the easement does get counted as open space and it appears to effectively cut down the children's play area. I also expressed disappointment about the timing of the outline application, that it was premature in that it preceded a master plan for the whole quadrant along Lynchfield Road that, as Councillor Moran has said, is in our local plan designated to provide 680 homes next to and behind this site, or at the side of this site, north of this site. Planning for those homes provides even more reason to be concerned about linking not just open space in this application before us today, but also the need to create strong connectivity, as has been said, out of the back of this site with market deep and services, Tesco's, two primary schools and the health centre, for example, all within a couple of minutes of this site uh, by walking or cycling. I also questioned at outline stage why the site was to be built from the front to the back, which was always likely to cause problems of construction traffic accessing through newly built and newly occupied homes. Um, and I, but I'm glad that we've, we've, we've got over that one this morning, hopefully. Um, just on the, on, this, on the parking, perhaps why there is so much concern about the parking is, and I do accept it was before the present applicants were involved, United Charities were specifically promised in the original design plan as many off-street parking spaces as the total number of bedrooms on the site. 
and I, I, re I appreciate there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, but this application does fall well short of that. It also falls short, as we've heard, and I won't go into the many aspirations about the new design, guide, design guidelines that we all welcome, tree-lined avenues that we saw in the previous application, fewer cul-de-sacs to nowhere, not so many tandem and rear parking spaces and so on. I didn't ask about Harish's uh, climate change mitigation. But I also want to be fair to the developers, and I understand this application pretty much follows the original outline plan shown at, um, um, at that stage. Um, but in many ways, Mr Chairman, what we're getting now is something of a legacy. I'm coming to an end. We're, we're getting something of a legacy, um, and I'm glad that we've made a couple of improvements to it um, that hopefully will make it um, more acceptable. I'm far from happy, I've got to say, with the application, but given what was agreed at outline, um, I, I, um, I was always reluctant to, to um, not to um, propose refusal. I had considered this morning um, proposing deferment for a specified short period. I don't particularly want to stop the, um, um, you know, the developers. I appreciate that would be a long, long delay. And in view of the um, comments from Georgina that she's agreed to this morning, uh, providing we can get them in the conditions, um, I'm, I'm happy to go along with it and um, um, agree with the um, recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you proposing approval, Phil, or just saying your support? I will support. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I think a lot of these issues are the uh, problem of outline planning, and uh, I wish we could yeah. scrap outline planning altogether. We've got allocated sites, and perhaps there's not uh, quite the argument, but I'm sure the planning officers will totally disagree with me. Shelley, uh, who's the next contributor in debate, please? Yeah. Councillor Penny Milnes. Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Yes, thank you. I, I'm in, interested in what Phil has just said. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to these reserve matters and landscaping and tandem parking, you know, I can never understand why we're held by the past. Uh, we should be moving forward with latest ideas and um, finding out that tandem parking doesn't work. Why do we keep repeating it? <clears throat> and we, we obviously need more trees and uh, walking spaces. And, you know, uh, I think it's just a bit disappointing, isn't it, that we have to be um, constrained like this. Um, I did think whether we should defer it, just like Phil suggested, for a short break whilst we um, consider a little bit more of those details. Um, I don't know. <coughs> I, I, I'm also worried about the connectivity, um, and I don't know how it um, aligns with the master plan. I haven't seen any evidence of that. So um, th those are just my thoughts on it for the moment. Thank you, Penny. Next contributor, Shelley, please. Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh. Councillor Bisnell Singh. Harish, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, fellow uh, colleagues. I, re I agree with everything that has been said, especially uh, Councillor Phil Dilks. I agree with that. But, Mr. Chairman, I'm really disappointed for, with regards to the um, climate change improvised uh, what's called, uh, pro uh, provision of, of. It will cost really pennies for a developer to put. It, um, the electric cable we incorporated within the materials of a uh, of the garage has been said welcome that there is electricity in the garage, but it will cost really pennies in terms and in terms of safety as well. It will be far safer for the developer to incorporate it during the constructions as opposed to put something afterwards. We do not know what kind of safety is observed. So, Mr. Chairman, if we're really serious into getting reducing our carbon footprint to by 2030, uh, to start for 2030, we have to start thinking in terms of these new developments to incorporate the electric charging points and, and the safety thereafter, like uh, with, with energy use. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Harish. Uh, Shelley, any further contributors? Councillor Robert Reid. 
Councillor Reid, Robert, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Well, um, I'd firstly like to um, acknowledge the uh, willingness that was shown in questions uh, with regard to um, further um, help with um, design um, and indeed with the expedience of organising the road access. Um, I think they... Um, <laughs> We have an assurance uh, given to us verbally today um, and I'd really like to sort of pick up and endorse further how we can evaluate uh, what uh, my um, uh, colleague committee member um, Phil Dilks has said in um, making sure that these further design um, um, offerings are in fact actually incorporated. I'm not saying that they would go against their word, uh, but it seems to me um, that they are particularly um, uh, necessary and that they are of great importance, particularly to the people that live there. Um, so perhaps um, in a summing up and going to the vote, we could ask um, for some endorse some endorsement from the officer um, uh, of actually how we could we could do that. Um, I welcome the green space within the development. I understand how uh, the drainage board and the um, uh, drainage dikes are there. I guess well, I don't guess. Uh, I'm sure many of us are slightly disappointed that they've taken that into their green space allocation, but um, hey-ho, um, a lot has moved on. Where climate change is concerned, I think we've all got to remember as members that we can, uh, we can ask for climate change considerations, but until we get further um, law um, enforcement on this, um, then uh, we we can do none other than actually asking. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. I will be in support of the application upon uh, that description within the conditions given to us, if we can have any extra ones from the officer. Thank you, Robert. Are there any further contributors, please, Shelley? Nothing further, Chairman, no. OK, can I come back to uh, Phil Jordan, please? Um, I think, is it possible, Phil, that um, if we uh, take a lunchtime recession now, that in that half hour you can put together those additional conditions so that members uh, can actually see them in, in sort of print? Is that a possibility? Yeah, I can do that um, now if that would help. And... Um, I guess my point was going to be, you know, I, I would be happy to, if members want to consider what the appropriate um, sort of level of consultation would, would be on the conditions. Um, we're not sort of obliged to, to do a particularly wide consultation on conditions, but I'd be happy to agree that whether it was the parish council or the local ward member had... Um, you know, an oversight of the details when they when they came in, um, so that there would be some appropriate participation in that as well. But again, I'll, I'll leave that for um, perhaps the local member to 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 agree how you know what that level of consultation would be. Uh, I think if if you're picking up on what has been said. Uh, which you are, I think that um, that consult consultation needs to be with uh, a representative from the parish council, which I assume would be Kate, uh, and local members. Um, uh, I'm, I'm concerned that we, um, we, we get a form of words in additional conditions, Phil, to enable the committee to uh, move forward with this and approve it with those conditions. Uh, 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 dealing with the concerns that have been raised. Yep, uh, ha happy to put some words together if, if you... Um, uh, okay. the break. Can I come back, Chairman? I mean, with respect, hearsay is, one, you know, is there, but I really would like um, some condition over the lunch break um, that is actually uh, lawful. Thank you. 
I'm sure Phil wouldn't put any conditions that were, were not lawful, Robert, I'm quite sure. OK, so if we can take a, uh, a lunch break now with apologies to uh, members of the public who are waiting to speak. Um, and if Phil uh, can sort of work through that between now and one o'clock so that when we come back, uh, there'll be those words, plus uh, possibly Phil, um, including uh, the further consultation with the uh, parish council and local members um, to take it forward. Yep, no problem. I had a good breakfast, so I'm, I'm all right going through that. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, Phil. So uh, we won't take a proposition to approve until after the uh, a lunchtime break. So if we can be back here, members, please, for one o'clock, that would be extremely helpful. And I hope that gives Phil and his team time to uh, do some uh, rapid work. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll adjourn the meeting now until one o'clock. Thank you. If any members of the public are still present, I'm just going to move you all into the lobby. Um, if, you, if you do come out of the meeting, you can just rejoin it again and um, we'll let you in when we reconvene. Thank you.